everyone. Welcome to STEM Talks, an interview series run by the first year reps of the Master Science Society. My name is Brenda. And my name is Giuliano Serafino. And just on behalf of me and Brenda, we are super excited to, uh, to host for you guys the first ever STEM Talks for the school year. Uh, firstly, we'd like to thank everyone for coming. And just a quick reminder is that our live recorded sessions will be posted onto McMaster Science Society's YouTube channel. And key highlights of this video will also be posted onto our Instagram page at maxi underscore 2024 in the near future. So with all that out of the way, uh, I just wanna say tonight we'll be interviewing a fourth year ChemBio student and president of the McMaster Science Society, Nicole Wong. So Nicole, for those in the audience who may not know you, could you briefly introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about what you do? Yeah, for sure. Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks, Juliana and Brenda, for having me. My name is Nicole, pronouns are she and her, and I am the current McMaster Science Society president. Uh, I'm also a fourth year chemical biology student in the co-op program. Um, I really enjoy carrot cake, and I'm really excited to be here. <laughs> Awesome, awesome. Okay, so first question, you have been attending McMaster for about four years now as a chem bio student. Uh, would you give, what advice would you give to someone uh, now attending their first year of university, especially now in the online environment we have? Yeah, that's a really good question. I definitely, as someone who was also on campus and has transitioned online, I cannot give students who have started in the online environment enough credit for the work that they're doing to keep up with an online semester. It is definitely the epitome of uncertain times and everyone is doing the best that they can. In an online semester like this, it can be really easy to get caught up in the multiple layers and layers of asynchronous and synchronous content that profs are throwing at you. And truly for me, getting through this has been about reaching out and finding those spaces of support and those people that I can rely on to get to um, get through the online content, whether it be um, you have a server with a couple of your friends that you've made over first year that help you with your content. Um, or if you have that one friend you've met during welcome week who you lean on to get help with like labs, it's about building those connections where you can find them and knowing that those on the other side most likely probably also want someone to turn to. So if you're having those times when you're unsure of what you're doing and trying to find a way to meet more people who are probably going through what you're going through, don't be afraid to reach out and get the support and help that you need. That could also mean reaching out to the Science Society, reaching out to academic advising, anyone who's put their support out there, don't be afraid to take it and run with it because it's meant to help you. For sure. And I just want to say, like, as a first year student, uh, with my experience with the MSS and seeing how you guys operate on a day to day basis, we love, especially the upper year mentors that me and Brenda had, uh, you guys love helping us helping us out. And if you if the McMaster Science Society and the McMaster Science kids ever have any advice, Nicole, put a spot on, don't be afraid to reach out to us because uh, Nicole, our VPs, our peripherals, they all have great advice that they would want to share with you guys. Yeah, Nicole, that was honestly some awesome advice. Um, I mean, you both, you two know best, like you two are in the middle of the online semester right now. Like I'm sure yeah. you've met a lot of people who are definitely going through and like a very unique university experience. So like, it's very, very, you like very, um, stuck in time almost so like sure. I'm sure the two of you can probably speak to that feeling of like wanting to have to utilize those connections as well yeah yeah for sure for sure um that being said there is the possibility that we will return to school next year so we wanted to know if you had any advice for making friends and also meeting people on campus as that will be new to us next year yeah of course It'll be interesting because once you are on campus, the number of um, unlikely interactions increases exponentially. It's the idea of like, it's like entropy. If we're going back to chemistry, the idea of like introducing 
a lot of more people in the space, those, those uh, collisions are gonna be more frequent, more disorder, there's more people. It's, it's not as structured as being in like breakout rooms and Zoom calls. For those of you who don't, I'm a chemical biology student, lock in, we're ready for these, these puns are coming. Um, but you're gonna have like those moments where you interact with someone one off, you just, and you know, coincidentally end up sitting beside the same person in a lecture or you, have a bio lab with someone you've never met before and advice there is to again reach out whether it be a full-on conversation if that's what you're comfortable with or asking for their instagram and messaging them or finding them they're like being on teams and messaging them through there like making sure you're making the most of those small interactions um to make friends on campus and then attend any like social events that are hosted by various groups. You'll see once you're back on campus, like there are so many student groups that are ready to like host students and like get them connected. So many more groups that you'll be able to like find more people out with common interests. Uh, yeah, greatly put for sure. Um, so just a quick question from me. Yeah, um, go for it. We're always, again, back to the advice, um, developing skills, study skills, study habits. What's your outlook on that? What's your, what's your input on that, that you think we should hmm. do or any helpful tips that you have for us going now to second, third year, fourth year, making that transition from high school study habits to university study habits? They're one of those things that come best when you develop them for yourself. Like it's one of those things that definitely is very much dependent on person to person. So don't be afraid to try different things out. I know for me, one thing I locked onto really early on is that I study really well with other people. So for like my study habits are finding those people that I can study with to hold me accountable. Um, so we will say, okay, we're going to get all of our content done by this date. And then from there, we're going to quiz each other. We're going to, um, you know, do our assignments and mark them like together in the sense of like seeing if we're both getting the same answers, seeing where one person is weak on content and helping them with helping them there. But that's a study habit. Like that's a, that's a method I developed through years. Honestly, it's something I've only like perfected quote unquote this year, it was in fourth year with um, one of my really good friends, Nagar Asli, who's in my program and her and I just study everything together. So in terms of like actually retaining the content, that's something that's dependent on you, whether you use Quizlet, like you use quiz cue cards, um, you orally dictate things, you decide to um, like find someone else to do it with, use like textbook questions, whatever works for you. In terms of actually getting stuff done, I'm a huge fan of time blocking. Um, I'm sure both of you have been familiar. So my people look at my calendar and go, why do you have so much stuff on it? I go, I don't. It's just when I want to eat dinner, I like block off the time that I'm eating dinner. Or if I'm like working out, I'll block that time off. If I'm, you know, studying or doing a lab or anything, I just kind of block everything off in my calendar so I know what to do when, and it's just a great way to hold yourself accountable to something as well. It's a good study tip for anyone who's looking for a way to better manage their time. Something I discovered in first year, why my MSS president, Connor, Connor McLean, did, I saw his calendar, I was like, I like that. And then I took that from him, and I decided to start using it. So if you're ever looking for a technique, I don't know, do both, do either of you have like ways that you've developed uh, like study tips that you've developed so far again because you're more familiar with that like yeah. space yeah I remember a meeting we had maybe a couple months ago and I actually saw I, I asked you that question I'm like Nicole can I see your schedule how you manage it because I know you have a ton of stuff right and I saw time blocking for the first time like I wasn't the most organized person in high school but after time blocking I've been using it on my day-to-day -day, and it definitely gives gives me a better layout of not just the day but the whole week and that uh, makes me less stress, uh, which is better for also my mental health. And um, yeah, that's that's one one tip that I actually took from you was the time blocking helps tremendously. Great tip. Yeah, I, and I also uh, started time blocking at the beginning of this year, which I haven't done before, but I thought it'd be really useful to like help plan out my schedule. And I pretty much stuck with doing like making a weekly schedule um, every like weekend 
just to plan out my week and have a better idea of what my week looks like. We're all don't we're we're all living at home. I've had calls. I was once on a call with someone and someone decided to start my dishwasher and the dishwasher in my student house is right connected to my room. And so in the background, all you heard was like, Grr! and I was like, no, this is the one time I asked you not to do it. So we're all learning from home. Don't. <laughs> yeah. And behalf of all students, I bet everyone that's still living at home really wants to go back to campus. Uh, just on my part, especially if they live in that, in that loud family, we love them. But uh, sometimes they just <laughs> take it down a bit, right? But um, yeah, for sure. Yeah, definitely. Um, all right, so let's talk a little bit outside of academics now. Yeah. Um, as we all know, you are the president of the McMaster Science Society. Um, so for those in watching our interview who aren't too familiar with the MSS, um, what is it all about? What do you do in it? And what opportunities does it provide? Yeah, that's a that's a very heavy question, which I'm so excited to answer. Uh, so the McMaster Science Society is a group of undergraduate students dedicated to enhancing your undergraduate experience, and that can take many, many forms. So when you think about your undergrad you, or your, for your, your first years in university, the main thing people think about are academic classes, labs, and that is the the part that the university is like they give you your classes they give you your labs you have tas to support you and profs to teach you and the mss the McMaster science society is all about okay what's after that what's beyond your lectures what's beyond your tutorials how can we make sure you get the most out of your experience and so from there we've taken on multiple pillars of different of programming to fill that experience up so for example, if you are a first year student and really looking for someone to talk to in terms of what do I do in my second year, how do I find resources, that's why we have a first year mentorship program, which is something um, that we launched. Was the version of it that is happening right now was launched about four years ago um, by Adina Silver, who is the VP academic. And that's something that's been started since then. And now it's blossomed into this fantastic mentorship program that first year students can connect with and there are socials that are held, et cetera. That is not something that you would find traditionally. That's something that the MSS provides. Not only academic things, let's say you're looking for a way to like keep your new year's resolutions and stay fit. We have our wellness Wednesdays, Wednesdays Fitness Friday programming on our Instagram. So it's all about supporting students beyond the brick and mortar for a virtual classroom. And that programming, whether it is like connecting students with research opportunities, socials, um, helping to do all like program society. So supporting smaller student groups on campus and different um, programs within our faculty, uh, et cetera, et cetera. That is everything under the umbrella of the McMaster Science Society. And that is one of the reasons why we always encourage students to get involved because it's one of those things where you can help enhance your own experience and help enhance others through various pathways, whether it be being a welcome week representative, a cyclone, which applications for that are gonna be coming out soon, um, whether it be applying to be a tutor, a mentor, um, to be on the executive, that's all ways that you can get involved with the MSS because our goal is to help other students. So if that interests you, that's what we're all about. Awesome, yeah. Um, especially, I know that on, uh, especially now in a COVID environment um, and an online environment, uh, for first years especially, um, going into university, we sort of expected, hey, this is where we start getting, we start putting in more volunteer uh, to where we want to go or more research to where we want to go, where we apply to research. So going back, let's say if you're back on campus, um, when everything's running smoothly again, I'm not too sure about the online uh, environment, but is there anything the MSS offers uh, for students that could help them um, achieve their volunteering or research goals? Yeah, so I, there's actually, I think there's actually a question that asked, um, oh, that's a different question. I'm getting ahead of myself. We're doing great. Uh, so in terms of opportunities for the MSS to, um, to try and reach your research goals, that's actually, we have a whole portfolio dedicated to that. So our external portfolio focuses a lot about connecting students with opportunities. So a couple of events that are held throughout the year, which will be held in person and virtually, no matter what, 
uh, things like our symbiosis, which yes, pun intended, is about connecting students with on um, with uh, thesis, like undergraduate fourth year students, research project students, upper years who've done research to learn more about how they got their opportunities and how they were able to find positions. Um, we have our McMaster Science Opportunity Board or MSOB, uh, which is on Facebook for those of you who are still on Facebook. Uh, so if you make a Facebook account because that interests you, let me know. I'd be very surprised if that's the reason you decide to. But if you do, it's a great opportunity because on that page, all we do is post the opportunities that McMaster has to offer, whether it be exec positions, clubs, volunteering opportunities, everything is hosted in that one hub. On top of that, we have Quantum Leap, which is our science and careers conference. So about what can you do after your bachelor's in science? Do you, you want to go to professional school or do you want to pursue? We've had people who've done like gone into business, gone into various forms of science communication. We have people who decide to go into grad school, et cetera. It's about expanding that, um, that sense of what you can do with your degree. And so between the MSOB, between symbiosis and the various um, like career panel events that we host, such as Quantum Leap, all of those collectively are meant to help give students an opportunity to find more opportunities. And if, the, if beyond that, in terms of finding, for example, like research positions, a lot of times professors are like, we are going to have to find funding for those positions. Well, then the MSS has something called our Student Employment Grant or SEG, where you can apply for funding for various job opportunities. You can find that on our website. And those not only through like events, but also through providing those funding opportunities for students to get the money they need to get those positions. Collectively, there's a lot of space for the MSS to help you find the opportunities that you want to pursue. And um, just 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 so we clarify, like the MSOB, the McMaster Science Opportunity Board, especially for people that are waiting between these other big events we have like Symbiosis. Yeah, I'd recommend going on Facebook, checking out the MSOB because they post new opportunities every day. And they're always great ways if you're seeking out to get um, any available hours in or just expanding, enriching your learning. Um, and also me and Brenda do post uh, for the people that follow our Instagram page every Tuesday and Thursday, we do post an opportunity, uh, ones that we feel that would, uh, ones that we feel would be uh, of, of popularity uh, to the students at McMaster, especially in the science faculty. So uh, don't be afraid to check those out um, because we'll be posting those again, Tuesdays and Thursdays uh, every week. Yeah. So, sure. Oh and, yeah, Brenda, you have something uh, to say? Yeah. And I'm really glad that the MSS has so many different resources that they can offer to students. And um, though some of them may be like lesser known, I'm glad you highlighted like a lot of the useful ones and a lot, I think a lot of students would benefit from using these resources as you have mentioned. That's fantastic. And if you have anything that you want to see happen, like if you have any ideas for anything, that's also what the MSS is about. So you can reach out to Brenda and Giuliano who are representing first year students and let them know what your interests are because then that's something we can enact on the MSS and that's how we take student ideas and turn them into projects. And, and in terms of that, um... We, if you check out our Instagram bio, we do have a link tree. Uh, right now it's not posted because we have the Zoom link up, but we do have a link tree. If you click on the link tree, there is a McMaster Science Society feedback form that you could, if you have any ideas or any feedback you want to give to the MSS, feel free to um, feel free to let us know. And also me and Brenda, our DMs are always open on Instagram. Uh, if you have any concerns or uh, anything you want to see happen within the MSS, uh, don't be afraid to let us know because we're welcome to any ideas. We're all first year students, right? And we all want to see uh, McMaster. I mean, except for me, but no. <laughs> <laughs> and, and for the faculty of science, as good as it already is, we want to see you grow even better and better for our next three years that we're going to be here. So again, yeah, just open communication. We're not afraid to uh, to hear you guys out. It's going to be it's going to be a fun next three years with the more input we get. So I did have a question about extracurriculars and how you balance yeah. that, but you. I'm pretty sure you said that time time blocking was the the main yeah. thing. Is there any other things that you do to keep up with your busy schedule? Uh, like keep on top of the research you have going, uh, you know, 
stuff you do with the MSS presidency and uh, school in general. Is there any other methods um, you utilize to have a more effective time management schedule? Um, I mean, for the most part, it's about learning to make the most of an hour, learning to make the most of the time that you have that you've blocked off for yourself. For me, it's one of those things where I'm making time for extracurriculars. You need to recognize that if you're doing something and you're not getting anything out of it, that's when you need to reconsider what you're doing. So my, my big like tip for people who want to get involved and like balance extracurriculars is that you will, you will be more motivated to balance them if you feel like you're getting something out of them. So for example, the MSS, being the MSS president, it is a large commitment and it takes up a good chunk of my time. And it is something that I'm very passionate about. And that's one of the reasons that I'm willing to put time into it because what am I getting out of it? Like in return, I'm helping lots of students reach new resources and get make new connections and do more with their science degree. I'm learning to work with fantastic individuals such as the two of you, the executive team, and just supporting something that helps support other students. So like for me, that growth piece of being able to work with other students to watch things happen, that's been that's something I value. So then I'm willing to put the time into it. It's the same way I feel about when I TA. I'm, if I'm, I'm a chemistry TA and I love doing that because I love helping other students. And like, it's something I really enjoy doing. So when I schedule time in for it, it doesn't feel like it's just another thing I have to do. It's something I wanna do because I don't want to like upset my students. Like I don't wanna disappoint them. I wanna be there for them. So when you sign up for extracurriculars, as much as be very tempting to like sign up for everything, but find the ones that you feel like you're gonna get something out of, that you're passionate about, that you, think will help you become a better person and a better leader and a better scientist and those are the things that you dedicate your time to because then when you block off a certain amount of hours in your week to do it it doesn't feel like it's impeding you because you're getting something out of it that's always always my tip when it comes to managing extracurriculars then you'll want to do it yeah and I feel like especially for first years or for me to like, as you, as when you go into first year, we want to try out as many clubs just because we're still learning what our hobbies, what our interests are. Right. So, but yeah, you make a great point as you grow, as you go on to further years, I hear from a lot of upper years, you start to become more familiar with your hobbies and interests are. And is that when you say you start narrowing down to the opportunities that are more, you know, more of your interest? Yeah. Once you've come, like you, try a couple of things and figure out what you like. And from there, you're able to pursue the opportunities that interest you further. So I was, I've been involved in other things other than the MSS. I was a residence orientation representative um, and that was for a couple of years. And then once my co-op term started, it was something I wasn't able to do anymore just based on timing. So then I had to put down my love of residence to move into my love of pursuing a job in industry or pursuing my professional career like as a scientist so then I found love in the job that I was working in so like sometimes you gotta like set some things down pick some things up and you'll find the things that like that are worth sticking with the entire way for me one of those things was the MSS and I've been keeping at it ever since yeah and I really like that you mentioned that um, it's good to join a lot of extracurriculars, but it's also important to focus on the ones that you like the most and the ones that benefit you the most and the ones that you're most passionate about. Yeah, because um, you only have so much time. You get to, and you have to make sure you're taking time for yourself because if that time you're not giving something, giving yourself something in return, then you have to make sure you're not emptying your cup because you can't pour from an empty cup, as they say. <laughs> yeah. yeah, for sure. And as a last question, before we begin the Q&A portion yeah. of this interview, um, I was wondering if you were to highlight like one opportunity that the MSS offers for like first year students or going into second year, like what's the most or what's the best thing that the MSS offers that you think would be the most valuable to students? First, uh, in year, first, year. Year. first year going into second year. Most valuable thing offering to students. 
I'm going to pick one thing and one event. I'm cheating um, because there are so many things that are, first of all, if you don't follow us on Instagram at Max I, shameless, shameless plug. Uh, if you don't follow us, because if you're looking for opportunities, that's how you find them by connecting yourselves with the pages where things are being advertised it's really hard. We can't post posters anywhere. Unfortunately, I can't fly like I can't drive to Toronto and like put a poster up on your house to remind you that opportunities are happening and everything's happening online so follow us there but I would say in terms of events so every year we host something called what to do in level two um for what it is is it's an event centered around showing first year students what second year specializations are like from the perspective of students who are in it so it's a full event centered around you connecting with upper years, asking them the questions that you might not be able to get answered at um, like a regular, like a web, uh, like a web search, like, you know, how do you find your program in terms of like workload and balancing it? And like, what topics do you find they focus on a lot? How much space have you found to explore your like side passions or your minor, et cetera, like getting that student perspective when you're going into a program, it's super valuable. And so when that event happens, which will probably happen sometime in March, that is something I think is so beneficial to first year students. That in the mentorship program, there's so many things, so many yeah. things, but I would say what to do in level two and the mentorship program, the one that allows you to connect with upper year students. Those are probably like the two biggest like events that we host specifically for first year students that um, would be super beneficial. For sure. And uh, again, me and Brenda are uh, still in planning, but uh, we're really excited to uh, moderate and uh, host the What to Do in Level 2 coming soon, coming in March, our target date sometime in March. We'll see when that happens, but <laughs> for sure, March. Um, and also one more question uh, from me. So for people that want to join the MSS, is there going to be um, a hiring process coming soon or elections coming soon? Is there anything that people can do to run for something or apply for something that they could join the MSS. Yeah, for sure. So there are a couple of big like application dates um, that are coming out. So stay tuned to our website and our Instagram, Facebook, our social media streams for the exact dates. Um, but a couple of things that are coming up, we have our elections period. Um, so the MSS has various levels of executive positions. So we have core executives. Uh, those consist of our president, vice president, and year reps. Uh, so Brenda and Juliano are two of our core executives. Those are elected positions. So if you'd be interested in pursuing an elected position, that period will occur in February and you'll be able to nominate yourself and then run on a platform similar to if any of you did student elections in high school, often people campaign, similar vibe, a little bit more centered on the MSS on a bit of a larger scale. If that intimidates you, reach out to any of the current VPs or current core executives and they'll be more than happy to answer your questions. If you're like, oh, maybe not in an elected position, but I'd love to be a part of the MSS, we have our peripheral executive applications that come out in March. Um, so if you're interested in being a cinematographer, if you're interested in being a research and volunteer coordinator, our sustainability director, um, policy and bylaws officer, those positions on the MSS, MSS, which both either run various events like, um, like our academic roundtable and I Love Science semester, or do things like do with, um, why is the name slipping me? Our internal operations officer, internal um, financial officer that do things like help balance our checkbook, um, help balance the budget with our VP finance, um, do things like managerial admin work with the VP internal, those kind of positions come out in March. And if that's something that interests you, you can also contact the people who are currently in those positions and stay tuned for when those applications come out. That's with the direct MSS executive. When our Cyclone applications come out, uh, you can apply to be a Welcome Week representative. They're in charge of all the fantastic events that you attended uh, during Welcome Week. And they're just an overall fantastic group of people that bring science pride and joy. And beyond that, there are so many other ways once the new team is hired, we hire committees, we hire mentors and tutors. And there are so many ways to get involved in the near future. It'll be elections and peripheral executive hiring. 
But if you miss those dates or don't feel like now is the time or you want to take on a different role, stay tuned because we hire like various committees throughout the year. So safe to say there's a ton of roles that the, uh, that, that the MSS offers. Yeah, so many yeah. ways to get involved. Sure. Okay, so Brenda, I think that ends our questions. Um, now's the time where we open up our live Q&A. Uh, if anyone that just joined or anyone that's been watching the whole interview, if you have any questions that you'd like to ask Nicole, feel free to shoot them in the, in the Q and A and uh, she'll be more than happy to, to answer what you guys. Absolutely not. Of course. I'm more than happy to answer all of them. Um, should I just go for it? If there are questions. Yeah. You can, yeah, yeah. 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 All right. So I had someone who had asked, do you have any tips for finding summer opportunities? This is a great question. Um, so I will say it is a lot harder this year um, because of the pandemic or the panoramic or the parabola, whatever you'd like to call it. Um, yeah, there are, it's a lot harder this year, but when you're looking for some opportunities, one of the things that I always started with was looking for people that I'd be willing to work with. So doing my research on, for example, if you want to do research in a lab, looking for professors that would interest you, who do work that sounds interesting, et cetera, and then emailing them, asking them about if they have any potential opportunities. Those cold emails can be rough. It can be a little tough, especially because profs are getting more emails than ever now, but it's not something that doesn't work. It definitely works. Um, and from there, they might even be able to connect you with op other opportunities, either within the institution they're a part of or things that they had seen advertised. Uh, various groups host different types of scholarships for or like research positions. So they just closed, but uh, Sick Kids has their summer student research program uh, that usually that closed today. But when it reopens, for example, next year, that's something you can look into if you're interested in doing research there. Uh, McMaster has its USRAs or undergraduate some student research awards. I hope that's what that stands for. I'm pretty sure it is. Um, but there are like ways to get secure the funding for those opportunities. And then again, staying in tune with like the McMaster Science Opportunity Board and keeping in touch with the opportunities that are circulating through there. All are ways to find summer opportunities. And a follow-up question that someone had asked, do you think it's too late to get a research position for the summer? It's never too late. It's never too late to get a research position. I will say it definitely gets more difficult as time goes on, but you cannot undervalue having a connection with a professor. So even if you email and you don't get a position from them, being able to reach out to them five months from now saying, I emailed you, in February and I wasn't able, you said you didn't have any opportunities available. Uh, I'm more, I'm looking for an opportunity for the next summer. Is there something that's there? And they will remember you from that last, from that last email. And Nicole, just a quick, just for people that are wondering. Um, yeah. Going to campus, once you're on campus, is it a lot easier to find those research opportunities or those volunteering opportunities once you're on campus rather than compared to like this online environment that we're in now? So I would say it depends, like really and truly they're about the same in terms of looking for the opportunities. In terms of the opportunities available, that's a little bit different because when things are in person, um, for those of you who don't know kind of how the labs are working right now, a lot of labs are working with limited capacity. So there are less people allowed to be in the labs at a certain time, less people allowed to be in buildings at a certain time. A lot of people are working from home, et cetera. So in terms of direct lab or like clinical or that kind of work, the reason why there are less opportunities when you're in an era like this is just because of the sheer number of people who are allowed to be in a space. And it's really hard to get new students in especially when there are other people who are trying to finish up work um, that are vying for that space as well. Once we're back in person, might might not necessarily be easier to find the opportunities because most professors do it through the cold email method, like emailing them and reaching out to ask for those opportunities, but they're definitely maybe more available 
simply because more people will be allowed to be in the lab space. And so they'll have more time and resources to take students on. It's a good question though. It's don't, it's really hard right now. Um, I totally get for those people who are like trying to think of ways to get connected. All right. Um, there's so many more Q and A questions here. Oh, I can, let's see. Do you have any suggestions to find other opportunities outside of research? Quantum Leap is a fantastic way to look, to find out what fields would be looking for students that are outside of research. And so if you meet someone who, let's say you talk, see a panelist who did like science communication or did like industry work, marketing work, connecting with them afterwards. And that would be a way for you to figure out those opportunities from there. Honestly, after that, using things like the Master Science Opportunity Board is always a good way um, because from there, you can then look for those opportunities that aren't necessarily cold professor research opportunities. And asking around, I tell everybody that if I'm looking for a job, I tell everybody I know. I tell everybody. Like I've told my aunts and my uncles and no does borders do not matter. People ask me if I'm looking for opportunities, tell them because that's a great way to find opportunities within your own circles and like looking for those various positions that maybe your your mom's cousin's neighbor works in this position and you never know until you tell someone. It's so it's so wild, but it's true. Some people make find really good connections that way. Try let's see. Do I just keep going with answering questions? Is yeah, we, we do. Do you want me to? Do you want me to send? Do you want to be able to ask? Do you want to ask them here? I can, I can send them here. We can do the answer answer live. Let's see. I've never used this function before. <laughs> uh, all right. It says, hey. This question says, hey Nicole, if we are unable to secure or research position, what other types of jobs slash volunteering opportunities are good to boost my grad school applications? All right, let's tackle this question. So there are a couple ways to look at it. Job volunteering opportunities, what other ways to look at it? We talk, we kind of talked a little bit about that. Check asking around the Master Science Opportunity Board. If there's ever been any like company or brand or thing you're interested in, Sometimes I'll just do a quick Google search and check to see if they're hiring. It's a weird way to do it, but it honestly helps. Attending conferences, whether they be virtual or uh, like right now they're all virtual, attending conferences to connect with people um, is a great way. So like NIRX is a conference that's hosted by the Life Science Society. That's a great way to connect with professionals. Quantum Leap is a great way to connect with professionals. And being able to secure those opportunities based on the people that you meet and sharing those interests. I'm tackling that last part of your question to boosting your grad school application. When I take on an opportunity, personally, it's work for me, I don't think necessarily about the application piece of it. Because when a person is interviewing you for a position and they are looking at your resume or looking at your CV, they want to see your story. They want to see who you are and why you do things. And so when you take things on, when you take on research opportunities, it is about building a part of yourself through that opportunity. So a boost isn't necessarily how I prefer to look at it. And I found reframing it about how I want to build my skill set is a way that is not only better for you because you're not feeling like you have to mad dash to fill your CV, but it also when you turn to interview for positions and they ask you about those experiences, you can come out of those experiences with more profound stories, profound lessons that you are taking into your everyday life. Those are the parts of those opportunities that people actually wanna see. If you have two or three solid opportunities that you've been a part of versus eight or 10 positions that you've jumped in and out of year to year, those, honestly, those are gonna look very different to someone who's interviewing you. And that doesn't, doesn't mean just because you've done 10 things doesn't necessarily mean you've gotten as much out of them as the two or three things you decided to dedicate your time to. Um, 
so yeah, that's my, that is my, my question. That's my answer to that question. Um, Brenda, Giuliano, any thoughts in terms of when you two have been looking for opportunities, do you have any advice for first year students based on like what you've heard from other people or from what you've tried, you've attempted yourselves? Um, uh, actually, oops. Where do you go so, uh, I, you were talking about conferences earlier and I think right now is like a really good time to start maybe going to conferences as everything is online. So there is no like travel cost or like you don't have to pay to stay anywhere for a conference, especially whereas like if we were in person, there could be like the, like I mentioned travel costs or like um, you have to like stay at a place because it is like far away. So right now is like a great time to go to like virtual conferences and learn a little bit more about uh, the things that you want to know about and uh, just get involved and experience the different things in different fields. Yeah, and also, um, again, keep updated with the MSS because, again, they offer a ton of events like Quantum Leap, which is happening soon. Symbiosis, which actually happened a couple months ago, which some of you guys might have met, uh, might, might have went to. Um, and also, I can't express this enough, like something that's helped me a lot is the McMaster Science Opportunity Board on Facebook. Really, really good if you want to see what opportunities are available, because, again, they're rolling in every single day. Um, but, yeah, that's, that's, my, that, that's my take on it. Um, the MSOB is, is a really, really good uh, tool and the events that the MSS has to offer. Amazing. I did get to see one question that was, um, what's Quantum Leap? So we'll answer that before we uh, move on to, I sent, I have, I sent you both the other questions that were being asked. I'll try to send them your way. Quantum Leap is our science and careers conference. Um, and it's designed to show you all of the opportunities that you can pursue beyond your undergrad. Um, this year, it's going to be taking taking place through the month of February. Um, we're going to have various panelists, speakers, webinars with different industry professionals, government professionals, etc. And it's essentially allowing students or allowing you to find new and creative ways to pursue new and unique opportunities like opening your eyes to things you can do beyond just going to professional school, beyond going to med school, grad school, law, et cetera. Like what else can you do with that? We had someone who did um, like illustrations, like medical illustrations for like textbooks. And that was something like, they had pursued that. So they did like their undergrad in science and that was like a field they were both creative and had a science background. So they decided to go to that. Um, we've had different like startup entrepreneurs come in, people worked at communications companies, some professors who started off in like, I, there was a prof who started off in chemical biology and then went, um, now teaches in the Department of Medicine. Like there's so many different people there that you get to kind of learn more about all the stuff that you can do. And so that's Quantum Leap. It's like, it's the MSS Science and Careers Conference or in this case, programming. So that's the event to go to then. It sounds like it's going to be really be informative so and really fun. Yeah. So excited. Okay. So uh, yeah, a question that I see here is how did your first year in the MSS um, develop your passion for it? Yeah, sure. That's a really good question. So for those of you who don't know, my history with the MSS actually started where Giuliano and Brenda are. I was the first year rep for the MSS, um, or one of, because uh, it was myself and Simi, um, who is now she, I believe she's actually in engineering now, which is something cool. Like a lot of, some students do choose to transfer into engineering and some students transfer into other programs, which if that's something you're doing, like I, if that's helping better your future, do what you gotta do. I support, I'm here, we're here to support you to make sure that you get the most out of your career. Um, but for me, I knew I wanted to be in science and I knew I wanted to get involved. So I decided to run for first year rep on the MSS. And when I got on the MSS, I was like, this is where I want to be. This is some of the most fantastic people I've ever interacted with in my entire life. Like I, I got on and I was like, wow, these people are fantastic. 
they care about science, they're all nerds, they all love student involvement, leadership, they are the nicest people ever, and they do so much work for, for no, like all volunteer to help other students. And I was like, as a first year, I was like, I'm set. This is where I want to be. I just grew and like an undying love for everyone on the MSS and for what the MSS did. Because for me, it was about being able to see everything kind of from the other side as well. Um, and that's why I always encourage people to get involved with the MSS because you get a chance to see the work that happens behind the scenes. And so I got to see when General Assembly happened um, and when Quantum Leap ran, I got to attend as a first year student because I was like, oh, I know about this opportunity. Um, and it was just fantastic. As a first year, I just ate everything up. And that that drive to be a part of the MSS is honestly why I'm here. It's one of those, it's like almost too perfect of a story. Like, <laughs> I mean, Brenda and Juliana, like, what has it been like to be first year reps? Like, how how has your experience been so far? Uh, okay, so I think honestly, my experience as a first year rep has been honestly like really good. I I think I went into elections not expecting much out of it because there were a lot of people running for the position. And um, after being elected and coming to my first meeting, I realized that um, like the MSS, the people on the MSS are all like really amazing. And I really admire that everyone is just striving to help improve the student environment and helping um, students get the opportunities they want to see and um, get involved in the things that they want to do. And I think um, the MSS is a great platform to express your ideas and to plan events and make changes you want to see in the student in your year and the students um, it, within McMaster. Yeah, Brenda pretty much nailed all the points. The number one thing, especially now, uh, since we're confined to our homes and can't really go outside to meet people, it, the the community that. Uh, the MSS has for you when you when you when you join it, either core peripheral, or just want to get involved with us just by asking us questions or having ideas. Um, yeah, it, everyone is so nice, uh, and it, it really eases eases your anxiety when you're in first year. Um, and we're always so open to actually meeting you guys too. Like people who have ideas that come to us, we sometimes invite them to our meetings just to say, you know, say hi and see what 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 they want, want to see the MSS, um, you know, take on, tackle on. But yeah, the number one thing um, for sure, the highlight of the MSS um, is community. Everyone at the MSS, every single person is just great. They warm um, and really smart. So if you ever have any advice, those are like the go-to people. Um, for that, but yeah, community number one, MSS. It's also science. The faculty of science <laughs> yeah. is actually fantastic. Everyone in science is just yeah. great. I I love our faculty so much. I tell every, like I had I was just in a meeting with uh, the other with some of the other presidents of other science societies like across Ontario. So I was with the Carlton president Melly and Tulsi, who's for Ontario Tech, and Julian, who's for Waterloo, and we were just chatting and like the whole time we just. You could tell, like, I was just like, I just love the faculty of science at Mac. And it was just like a great, when I talked to them, just to be able to, to talk about the MSS and talk about Mac science. It's just always like a fantastic, fantastic time. Because everyone here is great. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I think we just have one last question. Yeah. Uh, so someone asked, um, do you know what you'll be doing after uh, a chem bio undergrad? Yeah, I mean, as of now, I'm looking to pursue graduate studies, so master's, PhD. Um, I am currently, that's where I'm applying. So I am, when you were in the co-op program um, at McMaster, like in science, for chemical biology, the co-op program is um, a five-year program. So originally, honors chemical biology is a four-year program. If you choose to take on a take on the co-op piece, it becomes a five-year program. Uh, so as a fourth-year student, I have one more term of co-op left. 
Um, so I have an eight month co-op term remaining. So I get to go to work for eight months. Then I have four months of my degree left. I take some classes during that time. And then from there, I'm going to be applying to master's and PhD programs. I love science. I just love research. I, if you want someone to talk to you about research, email me because it's one of those things I really love. So I'm going to be doing that. And that's also because I know that's what I want to do. That's not for everyone. Not everyone wants to do research. Not everyone wants to do like be in the lab all that time, but that's, that's where I'm headed. But I also got a great opportunity to um, work at stem cell technologies, which is an um, like they do make cell culture and cell separation products. I got to work at like with them for a couple of months before COVID happened and like, it was also a great opportunity. So I'm like, oh, industry is so fun as well. Something I can do after um, I'm done my graduate phase. Honestly, you can go wherever you want. Right now it's grad. Who knows where I'm going to be <laughs> in 10 years? It's hard to say, but that's that's currently the plan. But, yeah. Yeah, that sounds, that sounds exciting, Nicole. Uh, can't wait to see what you do. And um, one more question just before we head out. Um, yeah. There is a big event coming this week uh, within the MSS, the General Assembly. Could you just uh, let our audience know uh, what that's about? Yeah. Of course. So GA General Assembly is happening on Thursday at 6.30. Uh, and it is essentially our way of telling you what we do. So the MSS is accountable to students. Students are the ones that hold the MSS accountable for everything. We run, like we run your services. We are the ones who host all the events, but that is because we serve the students of the Faculty of Science. So GA is meant to give students a way to directly interact with the MSS to learn more about what we do, about the opportunities we have coming, about the events that are upcoming, and to generally ask questions about what has the MSS been up to? Because again, we're here for students. And so things like General Assembly are meant to show you, the student population, what we're up to. Because that's, that's one of the things that's really important because if we're just sitting here twiddling our thumbs, that's not us doing our job. Our job is to provide you services and GA is one of the ways that we show you all of the work that we're up to and a way for you to provide us with feedback tips and critiques on everything that we're doing there's also we also do giveaways um we have a gift card giveaway as a part of it um if it were in person it would be pizza um unfortunately they haven't developed like mailing pizza yet um so once they do that once they do that we'll figure it out but right now there's also a giveaway as a part of it um if that's something that interests you um but yeah, come on out to General Assembly, learn more about everything that's going on, learn about cyclones, learn about uh, elections and hiring, learn about Quantum Leap, the musical, alternate art show, everything. That's what GA is all about. All right. Thank you so much, Nicole, for all that information about GA and about yourself and all your advice. Um, thank you for being our guest speaker and coming to talk to us. And helping first years learn a little bit more about the MSS and also give some advice. Thank you for having me, Juliana and Brenda, you're fantastic. Thanks. And I've, it's been such a joy. I really love talking to the two of you. So it's been so fun. Thanks for having me. Yeah. And also to our viewers, um, thank you for coming to our first ever STEM Talks. This was a project that we would see like what would happen. But again, you guys, with all your great questions, uh, we're definitely going to do a couple more. Um, for the months of February and March. The guest speakers are still to be determined, but again, we will let you know on our Instagram page at maxi underscore 2024. And once that day comes, you know, don't be afraid to share with your friends, repost on your stories, cause um, yeah, they're just gonna be a, a, as exciting and as informative as this one. So um, again, yeah, what Brenda said, thank you, Nicole, for, you know, being our first ever guest on the STEM Talks. Sure. Okay, everyone. So that ends STEM Talks. Um, thank you. Thank you all for coming. Yep. Thank you, everyone, for coming.